This is Math 432, Applied Combinatorics. I'm Professor Asaf, and we're gonna be talking again today about Stirling numbers of the second kind. We defined these before, here was the notation, capital S of NK, stands for the number of set partitions of the numbers one up to N into K blocks. Over here, we have an example of a set partition of six, the numbers one to six, into three blocks. Now again, it just matters, it doesn't matter the order in which the blocks come, it doesn't matter the order of the numbers within the blocks, we just think of these however they are, okay? So these are the set partitions. Now we've seen some interesting examples of formulas for these. Um, let me just remind you of a few of those. So uh, S of N1, that's the same, so that's if we put everything into one block, that's one way to do it. And of course, if we put it into n blocks, there's also one way to do it. Either all the numbers in the same block, each number in its own block, still one way to do it. Some other interesting formulas that we'd seen before, we saw that S n2, if we have just two blocks into which to put the numbers, we saw that that's actually going to be equal to a power of two minus one. And from your homework, well, actually, before we do that, if we jump to the other end, we've seen that um, S of n, n minus 1, if I have n minus 1 blocks, then by the pigeonhole principle, some block gets 2, and of course, just counting it, only one block will get 2. So this is just n choose 2. And for your homework, you were asked to show that if we take n minus 2 blocks, we also have a nice formula for that. The formula in this case is going to be a sum of things. It's going to be n choose three. That's if you have a block of size three plus one half n choose two to n minus four. Because you're gonna put two blocks of size two, one half is really one over two factorial because you're permuting those two blocks that have two things in them. So these are some nice formulas that we've seen before. For the Stirling numbers, but something interesting about the Stirling numbers, how do we compute them? Well, we can actually compute them with this recurrence relation. So what we're gonna be talking about in this series are these recurrence relations. Let's, before we prove it, let's do an example of it. So here's an example of this formula just to see that it makes sense. So let's do um, n equals five and k equals three. This is a pretty reasonable size. So what is s of five, three? Well, we can use our formula. Three is two less than five. So we can use this formula. So this is going to be five choose three plus one half five choose two two one. So five choose three, that's just 10, plus um, five choose two, two, so it's basically five factorial divided by a bunch of twos, that's gonna end up being 30 divided by two, which is 15, so we get a total of 25. Okay, what about the other terms? What about this one? So maybe we'll draw a line here. What is S of N minus one is four, K minus one is two. Um, well, 4, 2, we actually have two options. I'm going to use this formula because it's easier. So 4, 2 is just going to be 2 to the 4 minus 1 minus 1. So that's just 7. That's nice and simple. And now let's do this other one. K for this example is 3. And we have S of N minus 1. N minus 1 is 4. And we keep K the same, 3. Let's see which formula helps us. This formula helps us here. So this is three times four choose two. Four choose two, our favorite binomial coefficient is six. Six times three is 18. 18 plus seven is indeed 25. So the theorem's true, at least in this example. Let's try to understand why the theorem's true. And this is a great example of how to prove recurrence relationships in a combinatorial way. So it's an art to be able to give these combinatorial proofs, but the more you see of them, the easier it is to come up with them. Generally speaking, you think about what this means, okay? And you're gonna decompose this set into a disjoint union of things in this set and things in this set. That's kind of the high level idea of what we're gonna do. So suppose we have, suppose we have a set partition of n into k blocks. Generally speaking, when you have a recurrence relation and you see that n goes down by one, 
what you want to do is you want to think about where is n. Where is the number n in this combinatorial object? There are two cases that we can consider. So some block is of the form just n, okay? And the opposite case would be that we have a block, so some block, the block with n has n and something else. So I1 up to say I J, some other stuff in it, okay? So n is by itself or it's not by itself. If n's by itself, we take the set partition, then if you take the set partition, partition without n, without this block, is a set partition of the numbers one up to n minus one into, well, I've taken one whole block away, so k minus one blocks. That is exactly what this counts. So in these, there are two exclusive cases. The top case we've shown counts this. Fantastic. Now you can guide yourself a little bit and say, ah, we've got this K here and we've got this. So now we're not gonna be deleting an entire block. We're just gonna delete N. So here, if we delete N from this block, we're gonna get a set partition of n minus one that has k blocks still, and how many choices are there for which block n was in? n could be in any of the k uh, blocks. That gives us our k choices because n could be in any of those blocks, and when we remove it, we still have k blocks, and now our numbers go one up to n minus one. So this is a combinatorial proof of this recurrence relation. Again, it sometimes helps just to do the example to compute it out to see that it works, but the proof here is really gonna be from the combinatorial option and not from the algebraic side.